a quick look at our inventory uh, networking. And just confirm that our VMFX uh, DVS has indeed been created. So there's our DVS folder and there's our VMFX distributed virtual switch. And there's our port group. Again, just having a little bit of a slowdown. But that's all looking good. So currently no hosts associated with that uh, DVS, which will be one of the next things we'll set up. Okay, so just to confirm that if we wanted to create another port um, group and port profile, it's just a case of right clicking in UCS Manager, create another port profile. So if we wanted a port profile for vMotion, for example, I'll just create another vMotion um, using the same VLAN in this case. Again, I'd normally associate a different cause policy for vMotion traffic. Okay, and then we just need to create the uh, profile client, that's the bit that gets pushed through to vCenter as the port group. So what we want them to see, uh, the data center, the folder and the vmfx, be quite specific in this case and only send it to the vmfx we've just created. And hopefully as if by magic that should also have just dynamically happened in vCenter. And there we are, vMotion. Okay, so you get the point now that uh, UCS Manager and vCenter are tied together um, and you'll also notice there that I've, I can't do anything to that DVS within vCenter. So if I right click, um, I can't change anything. All the changes um, have to be made through UCS Manager, normally by a network admin or someone with a network admin role. So you can see there already we've we've got control of that edge back. Previously that would be a... a, a V switch uh, that we'd have no visibility of. Okay, so that covers the export and the registration of the vCenter with UCS Manager. Okay, so the last stage then is to add our two ESX hosts to our newly created VMFX uh, distributed virtual switch. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to first KVM into my two hosts. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I need to enable SSH on my two hosts because I need to copy the virtual Ethernet module software, the VEM software, which is the, the line card element, if you will, or the, you know, the patch panel, however you want to think about that element. Um, I need to copy that to both ESX hosts. Uh, I can either use a VMware Update Manager, VUM for that, um, or I can just simply uh, secure copy it on there, um, which uses the uh, TCP uh, port 22 uh, SSH. So I'll quickly just jump onto the ESX hosts, enable um, SSH with 4.1. It's a nice, simple process of just turning on. Uh, prior to 4.1, you had to go into that um, unsupported mode and turn it on via CLI. So I can't remember if I've turned SSH on on these already, but you know, it's worth double checking. So I need to F2. Uh, 
and you need to go into our troubleshooting options. Oh, got a bit of a lag going on, didn't mean to click that one. No, I certainly don't want to do that, so just pop back up a sec. Okay. And I'll disable, so we're all in, SSH is already enabled. So that's fine. I'll just check the other host. Okay, so exactly the same process. Just going to check that SSH is enabled prior to us kicking the copy off. Okay, so again, troubleshooting options. Okay, disable. Um, the SSH is turned on on this one. So yeah, so, so this was something I didn't need to double check. Um, or didn't need to check because it was already on, but you know it's worth you guys seeing the process um, because it's turned off by default. So you will need to pop in and turn SSH on. Okay, so let's download this virtual Ethernet module software. Um, they've got a nice um, helpful link on the front of UCS Manager 2. Uh, prior to UCS Manager 2, you just download the VEM element from uh, CCO. It would be under the Nexus 1000V uh, download because it's exactly the same element. The, the VEM portion is the same with Nexus 1000V as it is with VMFX. The only difference is, is the, uh, the, the controlling bridge element. With the Nexus 1000V, it's the um, VSM, the Virtual Supervisor module. With VMFX, we actually use the ASICs in the Fabric Internet. Okay, so we want to download that VIB file. It gives you a couple of options there. You can either download the little package or you can just download the, the VIB file individually. Um, so we'll just pull down the package there. So it's nice and helpful that that links on the front end. It does save you a, a step going via CCO to do the download. Okay, so we've pulled that down. Now we're just going to have a look at it. If I can remember where I've just saved it. Ah, that's the one. Okay, so just unzip that zip file. And that vib file should be buried in here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so that's the file we're going to need to uh, copy to our uh, two ESX hosts. So again, as mentioned, I'm just going to secure copy that. So just so we can see this going on, I'll putty into the two ESX hosts.
Okay? Let's fire up. Win SCP. Again, I think I mentioned earlier on, there is a, a tool imminently coming called Easy uh, VMFX, which should hopefully tie a lot of these stages together. Okay, so let's just log into that ESX host on the WinSCP. And hopefully that will connect. If you hadn't turned on SSH, this would just fail. That's looking good. Okay, so, so left is my local laptop and right is the ESX host. So let's just go and drag this vib file across okay that looks like it might take a, a little bit of time so um, I'll just do a pause there you go bit magic there You didn't miss much. It's just a couple of minutes of a green bar. Okay, so I have a quick look on that ESX host. I should see that vid file there. And there it is. So I'll clipboard that. Okay, so now we actually need to register that vid file. So again, we'll use our update command there. So you can see that there's no Vim loaded currently. Just copy that. So these are ESX update. should now install the Vim element. Okay, so if I just rerun that Vim status command, I should now see that there is a Vim loaded. Indeed we do. And the number of interfaces is 53. And if you remember way back when we actually set up our dynamic VNIC connection policy, that's exactly the number of uh, interfaces we specified. Okay, so I just need to do this to the other ESX host now. Okay, that's going across. Again, I won't bore you with watching that for a couple of minutes. Okay, so just check that that vid file is there. So we'll do exactly the same uh, installation process as before. 